Welcome, everyone, to another overbearing episode of Adobe Photoshop TV, brought to you by the National Association of Photoshop Professionals, the fine, fine people who bring you Photoshop User Magazine. Ta-da. This week's episode is brought to you in part by iStock Photo. If you need stock photography or illustrations, get them at iStockPhoto.com. We're also brought to you by CDW, makers, or sorry, I should say... Resellers of just about anything you can think of for your computer at cdw.com. We're also brought to you by DLO, Digital Lifestyle Outfitters, where they have the Home Doc Deluxe, so you can watch Photoshop TV on your iPod on your TV. Mm. Ah, yeah. Makes you stop and think. Also, we are brought to you by Adobe, makers of the wonderful program we like to teach you about Photoshop, and also others, too. Well, Adobe. hello, everyone, to a friendly episode. <laughs> I'm here with Dave. How are you today, I'm Dave? I'm fine, thank you, Scott. Thanks for asking. What about How, our friend Matthew? Good to Matthew? see everyone. Just freaking dandy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That, that kind of friendly. Kind of broke the uh, <laughs> mood there. Hey, uh, hey, we have got a crazy show for you today, but before I say who we are, uh, we have a special guest. Okay. We have a special guest tutorial from one of the finest Photoshop people on the planet. Ben Wilmore will be doing a special Super cool. He stopped by the NAPP headquarters one day, and I don't know if you know this about Ben, but Ben travels around in like a gypsy caravan. No, he actually <laughs> travels around in a, in a like a tour bus, this big giant bus. So when he when he comes into town, it's kind of like a parade. Well, he stuff docks. He it docks. Is. He like docks. It park. It's beep, a... beep, beep. <laughs> anyway, everybody comes out of the building. And, Ooh, Ben! You know, the and police he, come and, by. Yeah, and what's cool is you know he stops the door, goes. And smoke. smoke comes out, you know, and, then, and all this music plays, dun, 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 and a bright light behind it. It's awesome. Anyway, so Ben dropped by the office, and we were lucky enough to get him to do a tutorial for here on the show. He'll be coming a little later. And uh, now I would like to introduce you to my two co-hosts. My name, of course, is Scott Kelby, and his name, of course, is Dave Cross. That's Dave Cross, actually. This is an imposter named Matt Kloskowski, <laughs> and, uh, like. and this is Mr. Cross over here. Yes. And we have put together a show for you of excruciating proportions. <laughs> it is ambidextrous, multi-breasted, bilingual. It's going to be just an entire thing. So, um, wow. choppy hands, choppy hands, <laughs> choppy hands. Choppy hands. Yes, I haven't, I haven't seen been that choppy in hands a while. In a while. <laughs> We've got a show for you. You're not going to believe it. Yes. I'm pointing. I'm chopping. I'm doing distracting hand motions. All of it. Let the reviews fly on <laughs> iTunes. Go to iTunes and write. I can't take the choppy hands. <laughs> Dave Cross will now jump in. Dave Cross. Wow. You know, a lot of shows would stop right there and say, no, let's redo it. But if you if this is not your first time watching, you know there's no way in hell that's going to happen. And we just say, no, we won't stop. That's we won't basically stop. Yeah. Our Mr. Cross. Word, no. Hi. Welcome to my neighborhood. <laughs> I'd like to share with you a little technique that you can use on your computer if you would like to create a school letter for your children when they have partaken in some activity and you'd like to make a big giant letter, like, you know, those chenille things you used to put on your jackets? Now you two can do it right on Photoshop. Dave, uh, do you have the munchies by any chance? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just, I want to go back to that friendly nature That's thing very that we friendly. had going on. All right, so here's what we're going to do. I don't know why I made a new layer because I don't really need it, so let's throw that away. <laughs> Ignore that new layer. It's not necessary. Now, not the first to... thing that you want to do is find a typeface that has the look of those nice chenille letters. And I happen to find one that I will share with you now. It is called Freshman. And I found it on a wonderful little site that gives you free fonts called Da Font, as in dafont.com. It's in oh, some foreign it. language, but uh, you can change it to English if you click in the right place. So you just, as you'll see, this is a really nice... Kind of that's the look of those chenille letters, and, and you can. I'm going to do an S just because I can. So we're going to make it fairly large so you can see the effect. Select the type, and then use our little scrubby sliders to make it fairly big. 
And the color will be whatever you want, the final, the background color. If you've seen chenille letters, you know they're always kind of multi-leveled. So often it's white around the outside. Now at this point, you have to make sure that the size of your type is the correct size, because after this, the other layers we'll create will no longer be type layers anymore. So I'm going to now make a selection of my type. I held down the Command or Control key and clicked on the thumbnail. And I want to make my selection slightly smaller. So I'm going to go to the Select menu, Modify, Contract, and contract it by probably around 10 pixels or so, and that will make a slightly smaller S. I'm going to make a new layer. Now I have to choose my first color of my actual chenille, and we're going to go with, assuming that this, whatever fictitious school this is, is kind of green and gold. I'm going to fill this one with green. And then once again, strangely enough, modify, contract, this time probably by a smaller amount, and again, make a new layer. And I'm going to choose the color for the actual chenille part, which will be kind of a gold color. And of course, you can pick any colors you want. These are just the ones I'm using for this demonstration today. And fill that. And I'm just using the keyboard shortcut for fill, option, delete, or alt, backspace. Which isn't? Either one. Depending on your platform, you can use the one you want. I'm being very generous. I'm letting them use whatever shortcut they wish to today. In the Mr. Rogers style. So that's the basic look, and then we want to make it look more chenille if that's a word. It Sounds is. like a 50s group, the chenilles. Uh, we're going to add, whoops, a very slight bevel and emboss to the green layer. And I mean, when I say slight, I mean, you know, slight. Like probably one pixel and maybe Ooh, a little bit slight. of softness, just so it's very subtle. <coughs> and then finally, go to our top layer which is going to be the chenille part. And we're going to simply go to the texturizer filter. To the chenille filter. To the chenille filter, which is <laughs> available Captain and chenille filter. Chenille.com. And all we need to do is, of course, depending on what your uh, texturizer comes up with, you're going to go to sandstone. You want it to be a fairly large scaling and a fairly high relief, so it creates that kind of uh, textured look that you see in chenille, and you have to experiment with the settings. Of course, it, your results will vary with your uh, the resolution of your file, and just like that, you have a little chenille letter look. And you, if you wish to, of course, you can select or link all three layers together, so you can either move it around or free transform it. And there you have a nice little chenille letter. If you're creating a nice little look for your college layout or something of that nature. And of course, you can use any letter and any colors you wish. Just like that. Gosh, Dave, that's cool. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. I can't wait to show the kids at school. <laughs> and then we'll put on a show in the barn. Okay, sorry. okay hey, I, I, that was very nice, <laughs> Mr. Cross. Thank you for the chenille. I've, in fact, I'm not even sure I've ever heard the word chenille, so this is a learning experience on two levels. But I, I, I was just, seriously, I was just on Corey Barker's blog, and I, I talked about Corey's blog on Planet Photoshop last week. And uh, Corey found uh, some limericks, Photoshop-related limericks, uh, in the NAPP member forums, and he put one of them on his blog. And it, it actually mentions, of course, Corey, but it also mentions the Photoshop guys here, so mm. i got to read it because it's, <laughs> it's good. There once was a Photoshop lad whose tutorials made the people quite glad. With his fill and his stroke, he is a quite bloke. He is quite the bloke. <laughs> that amazing Photoshop lad. The other nap fellow, Kloskowski, is constantly rocking the house <laughs> Though Dave and Scott try to distract him a lot, his <laughs> tutorials still make me say, wow-ski. <laughs> Very nice. Wow. I was remember, waiting for the rhyme with Glasgow. I was say, remember, <laughs> if you can't come up with a legitimate word that rhymes, by make gosh, just up. make one up. <laughs> so that's on Corey's blog. Now, don't let the fact that Corey's running limericks on his blog <laughs> in any way dissuade you from visiting it, because he doesn't always run limericks just three days a week. Okay. <laughs> so uh, let's see. That was, uh, you know, Matt, I was wondering if you have a tutorial that would make me say wowski. I do. In fact... I have one by popular request. Oh, I love those. All right, so uh, this week we're going to take a look at a way to fix an older photo. So you scan in an old photo. A lot of times it has tears, creases, bends inside of it. Uh, so we're going to take a look at how to fix it. But uh, more importantly, we're going to take a look at two tools, the healing brush and the clone stamp. And I have a lot of people uh, that will ask me, what's the difference between the two? Why would I use one over the other? So as we work through uh, this picture here, you'll see exactly that. 
Now, this is actually a picture of you six months ago. <laughs> uh, actually, a year ago when we first started Photoshop TV. <laughs> okay, good. So. You've matured a lot. I have. Then. So, the first thing that we want to do is create ourselves a blank layer because we want to do all our work on a separate layer whenever we can. It just makes it easier later on. And then I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on, uh, let's start to work on the background up at the top here. And we're going to start off with the healing brush tool. Now, the very important thing to make sure you do is turn on sample all layers because if you don't, uh, you're not going to be able to do your work onto this blank layer here. So you need to tell Photoshop to uh, let you sample all layers. And then the way the healing brush works is it works just like a brush. Use your bracket keys to make it larger and smaller. And hold down your Alt key on the PC option on the Mac and click in a clean area. And then just paint over whatever you want to fix. And you see what Photoshop does? It takes wherever your crosshair, look at, if you take a look at the, uh, trying to get the crosshair where you can see it. See the crosshair right below my brush? It takes wherever that is over and it melds it in with whatever you're painting. All right, so that wasn't a good brush stroke, but I just wanted to show you that crosshair. All right, so you see where it's coming from? See, now it's starting to pick up over the hair because that's what it's going over. So you'll, you can't just sample once. I'm going to Alt-click, Option-click, again somewhere else and sample a different area, but you're going to have to continually resample. And if you see me moving the photo like this, I'm just holding down the spacebar key and clicking. So continually resample and just paint over some of these areas. And I think the healing brush works great here because the background is fairly, uh, it's the same texture. All right, so I'm okay with just using the healing brush because the Photoshop does a good job of just melding uh, whatever I sample in with the crease that I'm painting over. Okay, uh, I missed a bad area there. There we go. So that's before and that's after. If you ever need to, you have it on a separate layer so you can drop your opacity. I, I don't need to here because I don't want to show that crack, but uh, what happens a lot of times is uh, maybe when you get over the skin texture, especially if you're retouching people, you might, might want to show some of the original skin. Now, let's take a look at the hair part over here. Here is where I like to go over to the clone stamp tool. And again, turn on sample all layers. And the reason why I like cloning better for this is because if I use the healing brush, Let's show you a bad example first. If I sample and I click and start to paint, Photoshop doesn't do so good of a job. So using the healing brush, I can exactly duplicate pixels. It, it clones them using the clone stamp. It clones the pixels. So I'm going to click on an area where the hair meets the background, and then I'm going to click and paint. Okay, so what I did is I alt-click, just like healing, alt-click, and then paint with the healing brush. And now I get the same transition I had here over here because it's cloning those pixels, pixel for pixel. Photoshop's not going to do any of that healing or, or melding work that we had before in the background. And then I like the, the clone stamp for the hair as well just because I find uh, you're not really going to find too much repeating texture in here. So I'm okay with cloning it exactly. Okay, so let's zoom out. And we'll take a look at what we have so far. That was before and that was after. So now let's go take a, a look down here and we'll work on some of the skin. I'm going to go back to the healing brush for this because I'm okay for Photoshop to make the, the melding choices for me. So I don't need to clone it. And just take one long swipe at it with that healing brush. I will, however, resample down here because the skin tone changes between it's right at the chin. So I want to make sure I get that skin tone in there. Photoshop does a real good job. You see that? But I got too close to the shirt, so just undo. And again, we'll heal. Got a little crease over here. Let's fix that. Okay, now we're going to move over to another problem spot, and that is where the chin meets the background. Same thing as the hair here, folks. Uh, just use your clone stamp tool. And let's zoom in just a little bit more. And what I do with this is I'm going to sample as close as I can to this crease right here. I'm going to sample that point right where the chin meets the background. I'm going to get a smaller brush, and I'm going to put my cursor right over that point and then paint. 
And so my sample point, notice, see how tight it stays in with my brushing here? Because there is a, a pretty good degree of uh, tonal changes over here. And then do the same thing, take it out the other way as well. And if you need to, you can fix some of it up if you see too much of a transition with the healing brush. Again, the open skin area works fine. We'll do the same thing over here. Sample close as you can to that crease, right where the chin meets the background. And then take it out each way. There we go. And now we'll go back over to that healing brush again because I'm okay with uh, letting Photoshop do the work for me in these open skin areas. And do the same thing on the background. Remember, always alt click or option click a lot to resample. And we'll fix the rest of the background out here just like that. You can see it does a great job, that healing brush, of just melding everything in. I could probably get this just with one long brush stroke. See that? You can't even tell. So that's before and that's after. If I were to go in here, I'd work on the shirt. I'd use the clone stamp tool where the pattern on the shirt is, and I'd use the healing brush uh, where any of the open colored areas in on the shirt are. But let's take a look at our before and after so you can see um, what the difference is. And it, it actually is pretty amazing when you look at it. That's what we started off with. And five minutes later, that's what we end up with. And you can't even tell the difference, I don't think, in any of that skin area. So get rid of all those cloning and healing. You could see that it's a... Uh, <laughs> stop it. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see it's a, a good difference between the two tools, what you're going to want to use one for uh, versus the other. Cloning is great for when you have, need to make an exact duplicate of part of the photo, but Photoshop's not going to do any other work for you. Photoshop's just going to take it pixel for pixel, where the healing brush, that's where Photoshop comes in and it does some of the work for you and it melds it all together. One word. Thank you. Wowzy. <laughs> Wowzy, wowsy woo. Hey. <laughs> Thankfully, it is time to take a break here. <laughs> we'll be right back with more of Matt Kloskowski. And I quote, the other nap fellow Kloskowski is constantly rocking the house We'll be right back with more Adobe Photoshop TV. there was a young man named Ben Wilmore. He was in San Antonio on February 26th for his Photoshop for Photographers Tour. Make sure you go check that out. Also, Dave Cross will be in Oklahoma City doing his Photoshop Power Tour. On February 27th, the very next day, Bert Monroy will be in Phoenix, Arizona, all the way to Tacoma on February 28th. And then Taz Talley will be taking the uh, InDesign our InDesign one day tour to Portland, Oregon on March 28th. Also, don't forget, Photoshop World Boston is coming up April 4th through 6th. It's the kind of place you can see a guy like Ben Wilmore live. All right, back to you guys in the studio because that's it for this episode of Photoshop on the Road. All right, we're back in the studio and now we're off roading. <laughs> hey, we were very lucky, as I mentioned earlier today, to have uh, Ben Wilmore, who is the, one of the preeminent, prominent, and punctual Photoshop gurus in the world today. He stopped by the NAP offices, and of course, if you make the mistake of stopping by the NAP offices and you know Photoshop on any level whatsoever, it force you into tutorial servitude. <laughs> so here is Ben uh, coming to you from NAP's headquarters, where uh, Matt uh, got him to do a tutorial for us right here. Ben always has really, really cool stuff. and. If you've never seen Ben live, he is, is just brilliant. He's one of those guys that really gives you the why behind the how. And he's, he's, every time I sit in one of Ben's classes, always learn something new. So uh, here we go from uh, Matt back at, of course, Matt's right here. But I, 
move quickly. It may, <laughs> may, you can't believe how fast he is. It's incredible. You don't mind the other shirt. He, he goes like this, and you can just see the steam where he was. <laughs> Here's Matt and Ben. Hey, hey, and hey. I am here in the NAP recording suite. Pretty cool, huh? Oh. The NAP recording suite with none other than Mr. Ben Wilmore. What's up, Ben? Just hanging out. Took yeah. the bus over to the... NAP headquarters in the recording suite right now. <laughs> so Ben is here with the bus, and uh, in case anybody wants to find out a little bit about the bus, where would they go? They would go to my website, whereisben.com. Cool. Well, Ben, as you know, whenever you come to visit us here, you can look at the camera because right. I'm not very just, pretty. Just uh, whenever you come out. to visit us here, that we never let anybody get out of our studio without recording a tip. So uh, what do you got for us? Well, I figured I'd show you how to combine two photos together where one might have a warm feeling, what I call a desirable color cast, like sunrise, sunset, dinner by candlelight. And then you want to put something else into that photograph. But if you just take a, any average shot and put it in there, the problem is it's not going to have that same warm feeling. So I'll show you how to adjust it, get that same warmth into that shot as the one you want to combine it with. So when you put the two together, they look like they belong together. Sounds very warm. Right, thank you. <laughs> All right, well, hey, let's get going and we'll take a look. Sounds good. Here I have two images I'd like to combine together. And the woman on the right, I'm going to add to the photo that's behind it. The problem is the photo that is behind has a warm color cast to it. It's what I call a desirable color cast, where I don't want to get rid of that. But if I bring in this image, which does not have that color cast, it might not look like it belongs there. So let's grab a selection that I made earlier. I used uh, the extract command to isolate her. And I'm going to drag her over with the move tool to that other file. And if you look at that, it's at least obvious to me that she doesn't have the warm feeling of the image that's behind her. So it's either that she's standing there with different light hitting her, or it looks like you did it in Photoshop. And so I want her to have the same warm feeling as the uh, other image. So I'm going to hide the layer that she's on and let's go back to the other image and figure out how exactly to get the same color cast in here. The First thing I'll do is get rid of my selection because I want to work on the entire image and now I'm going to go into Curves. And Curves has a feature designed to perform color correction. You access it by clicking on the Options button. We're going to have it do the opposite. Instead of color correcting the image, we're going to have it introduce a color cast. To do that, I'm going to move the Curves dialog box over so it doesn't obstruct my view of the images, and I'll click on that Options button. Here's the automated color correction window, and in there we need to set it up a special way. At the top, there are three choices, and what we could use, we want the bottom of those three choices, and we want this checkbox to be turned off. And now what we can do is Photoshop is going to make the darkest portion of the image whatever color appears in this rectangle, and it's going to make the brightest area of the image become whatever color appears here. And when you have a color cast, that color cast usually sneaks into the shadows and the highlights, which are areas that usually don't contain much of any color. So we're going to end up changing those. So what I'm going to do here is move this over so that it doesn't obstruct my view of the image. And I'm going to click here on the shadows uh, rectangle. When I do, it's going to bring up a color picker allowing me to choose exactly what color I want my shadows to be. Now behind this is the image I'm working on and it's somewhat obstructing my view of the image we want to match as is this color picker. So I'll move this color picker over and then I'm going to zoom out on my picture. If I zoom out the image will get smaller and smaller revealing more of the image that's underneath it. I'll do that by typing command minus on a Mac. That would be control minus in Windows. And now I get a nice view of what's underneath might even move my color picker back over a little bit because this area here will show me the color I'm choosing. Now the idea is to click on a dark portion of this image, an area that is almost black but not quite. Because black wouldn't have any color in it, we need something just a little bit lighter than black in order to be able to pick up the color. So I could try this light fixture here and click on it and see if I can see any difference here. To me it looks like it's black. So instead I'll go for an area a little bit lighter, maybe up in this area, click. And now, I don't know if you can tell or not, but this area here has got the slightest hint of red in it. I could go a little bit lighter if I want a little bit more color to be introduced into the image. But I can see a slight hint of red in here compared to what's below it. 
So I'll click OK. Now I've determined what color the dark portion of the image will be. And now I'm going to click on this rectangle next to the highlights. And again, I get a color picker. You can't see the whole thing, but it's there. And I'm going to, this time, move into the bright portion of this image. I want to avoid areas that are solid white because there's no color in there. But something a little bit darker than that, you know, where it's not blown out. So if I try to hit this candle's flame, I'm guessing that's going to be white. So when I click, I see no change in these two colors here, indicating it is white. So instead, I'll go for a bright area in here. I could try up here in this light fixture to see if it's white. Now, see there, I picked up some color. Do you see it over in this area? And that's the color we can use in the bright portion of the image. So I'll click OK here, and then I'll move over my automated color correction dialog box, and you'll see that it's hard to tell, but this is a little bit reddish black, and my highlights are going towards the yellowish orange. I'll click OK. And then I'll bring curves back in here. And uh, I'm in Photoshop CS3, so it shows me the result of those changes with uh, these different colors here. Uh, but you can ignore that, just click OK. It's going to ask you if you want to save those colors to use them all the time. And if you ever do automated color correction, I suggest you click no. Otherwise, every single time you perform color correction, you're going to be introducing this yellowish-orange cast. We just want to use it this one time, so I'm going to click no. All right, now let's try to drag over our image again. I'll zoom in on it again so we can see it full size. And I'm going to try to get my selection back. This is a selection, again, I made using the extract command earlier. I'm going to now click with the Move tool on her and drag over to the other image. And let's position her down here. And let's see if that looks any better than the other version we had. To me, she looks like she has a slight warmth to her. I might have been able to get a little bit more color had I gone into a little bit brighter area in the shadows. Uh, but let's take a look and compare it to what we had earlier. I'll turn on the layer that I had added earlier, and I'll slide her over so we can compare it. Actually, I've got to click on a different layer. Okay. But if you compare those two, to me, the image on the left looks much more like it belongs in this photograph than the image on the right, because it has the same warm color cast that the image has behind it. The key to making it happen is to make the highlights and the shadows be the same color in both photographs. Because when you have a color cast, the highlights and shadows are usually areas that don't contain any color but that color cast will appear in those areas, and we can kind of measure it, and therefore adjust uh, another image to match. Well, very cool stuff, Mr. Wilmore. So uh, where can people find out a little bit more about the man that we call Ben? Well, two different spots, uh, two websites. The first is whereisben.com. That's my blog. That's where you follow my adventures on the bus as I travel around the country taking photographs and exploring. The second one is my corporate website, which is digitalmastery.com. That's where you'll find out about appearances I'll be making, videos I've made, all that kind of stuff. Cool, and you also teach the uh, Digital Photographers Seminar for PhotoshopSeminars.com, right? That's right, PhotoshopSeminars.com. We'll show you my uh, tour. Well, hey, man, thank you for coming by, and thank you, everybody. Adios. We will see you at some point in the future. All right, thanks, Ben, and uh, great to have him on the show as always. And now we have Stephanie over in the Photoshop Action News Storm Team News Center. We're going to go there now for the latest in Photoshop, semi related Photoshop news. Photoshop Storm Team Action News with news anchor Stephanie Cross. Hi, guys, I'm Stephanie Cross. First in the news, Adobe has released an update to Bridge CS3. Check it out at adobe.com. And Corey Barker, the laddie, has added some Photoshop tutorials to planetphotoshop.com. Check it out at this very instant, right now. Go! And finally, On One Software has announced their public beta of Genuine Fractals. You can get yours today at this link right here. Check it out. I'm Stephanie Cross, and I'll see you back next week. Well, hi, everybody. We're here in Sarasota, Florida at the Digital Technology Center. We're doing an on-location report, and uh, this is the Lightroom Workshop, the two-day workshop that I talked about on the show. Well, now we're in the middle of the Lightroom Workshop, and these fine people are my students here. Hey, guys, show us your work. Show us some stuff that we did in the class this week. There we go. See, we shot some calla lilies. We shot uh, three live models, and we apparently shot two birds as well here in the, uh, in the, in the shoot. <laughs> All right, well... Um, 
So we've been working on Lightroom hands-on. We've been doing everything from start to finish, including we, we did all the shoots together and processed the photos, went through the whole process and stuff. And uh, hey, how do you guys like uh, Photoshop Lightroom? <laughs> I love these people. <laughs> anyway, so um, we're going to take on a quick look around the Digital Technology Center here, let you see uh, some of the stuff that we've been doing, and um, here you go, take a look. All right, well, that's it for our live report from the Digital Technology Center in uh, Sarasota, Florida. Beautiful Sarasota, Florida, right down I-75. Well, back to you guys in the studio. Or actually, back to me with you guys in the studio. We are back. And, uh, hey, I just want to mention, uh, because we've never, ever mentioned it before, but we are coming uh, to Boston with Photoshop World, and I'm teaching there, and Dave teaching there, and Matt's teaching there, and Ben's teaching there. Bert's teaching there. All the cool kids will be there. But <laughs> besides the 80 like classes, the 80-something classes, and besides the trade show floor where everybody from Adobe to Wacom to Epson, all those guys are there, there's other stuff at Photoshop World that you might not have thought about. Stuff like after-hours stuff. Right. That's right, because we're all staying in hotels and, well, <laughs> no, uh, we <laughs> have legitimate after-hours <laughs> things as well. Uh, uh, for example, we've got a thing called Photoshop Midnight Madness, which is always... Uh, it's the hottest ticket to get at Photoshop World. It's free, of course, but uh, you have to get one of the tickets. It's only limited to a few hundred people, and there'll be a few thousand people there. So, but it is—it's wild. We, we just—it's you <laughs> wild. don't learn anything. Yes, it's, it's the one place you're guaranteed fun. not to learn anything. Absolutely. Actually. In fact, no. Sometimes you learn some really bad tips. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But it, it's just it's just a, just a, a lot of fun and stuff, and that's one of the other, the aspects of Photoshop World. It's not just all the classes and stuff, but you're, there's a lot of opportunities for networking. Of course, there's a big party, right? Right, the big party that where you get to meet the instructors and inter interact with other users. And we always hear people say that they met some really cool people that they continue yeah. to stay in contact yeah. with. Absolutely, once, uh, I mean Photoshop that's one hundred percent. I I think when people leave, I mean they get the Photoshop stuff obviously, mm -hmm. but when they leave, a lot of times. I always see on the NAT forums and whatnot the the experiences that they had there and the people they got to meet is uh, is is worth the price of admission. So, and the party yes. this year is at Jillian's, which is where I've always wanted to have the party. Jillian's is just it's like a giant three story Chuck E. Cheese for kids. <laughs> it's amazing. It's really really very very cool place and and there's adult beverages as well. <laughs> um, but we have all kinds of different after hours things. We've got of course the the creative side of digital photography. And we've got a late night track of classes and all kinds of stuff. But anyway, just we always mm -hmm. talk about the classes and who's going to be there and all, but I think it's kind of an important part of Photoshop Worlds, the whole experience, the hanging out and making new friends because you know, we all need Photoshop friends. Because if I didn't have Dave and Matt, I would just be sitting here alone crying. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's important to have Photoshop friends. So check it out, photoshopworld.com. Well, it's contest time, and our master of the contest is Mr. Dave Grass. Yes, sir. And last week, we had a contest, like, like we do every week. And last week, yeah. the question was, there's a format called PSB. And what is that? I was going to say stand for, because that would suggest it actually uses those initials, but it doesn't, because doesn't, the answer was large document format is the of course, correct answer. Of course, answer. PSB, it's so obvious. Yes, pretty. it's Photoshop big is one way to think of it. And uh, yeah, from the it. many, many entries we had, this person that you will see right now ta -da, was the winner. So congratulations to that person who got a bunch of really cool stuff. And again, this week we have yet more cool stuff of a slightly different nature for Ooh. the winner. I have That's the right. Cool Go book. ahead. Ooh. I have Mr. Dave Cross's Photoshop Finishing Touches book. Mm. Mm. Held extremely oh, still, I must say. Advertising. It's yeah. Very awesome. Very well, cool book. Lots of things about just uh, how you know you, you get your photo to where you want it, how to finish it off. Those final finishing touches, if you will. Very nice. We also have a DVD. It's the best of Photoshop TV. And you know what? This is the hardest video to ever put together in the history of videos because <laughs> there really is no best. <laughs> So you put it in the DVD, in your DVD player, it plays a 30-second DVD, and, it and that's it. That's it finished. You'll also get a subscription to a subscription to, which is Canadian for getting this eight times a year, Illustrator Techniques newsletter. And we've recently gone uh, to a larger size, more information, and there you also get access to the subscriber-only website 
with this subscription. Dun, dun, dun. Finally, a DLO home dock. You hear us talk about them, how you can put your iPod in, watch your iPod on TV. You can see it right on TV. It appears right now. You can watch whatever's on your iPod on TV. So uh, DLO home dock, thank you, and you can win it. Also, to mention one of the features about this, and I think we talked about this last week just a little bit, but uh, the DVD, if you get it, is indestructible. So <laughs> you can just, if you don't want to watch it, it makes a heck of a good mm, weapon. Awesome. I think the home dock is indestructible, too. <laughs> I'm not sure that it is. Let's find it. It's just a fine, <laughs> fine piece of equipment. All right, Dave, what's the question? The question is this. Here you see in front of you now, as I talk in the background, two pictures of the character palette and there's a slight difference between the two the one on the left is the typical one and the one on the right has something changed and the question is, this is a challenging one how do you get the character palette to look this changed way mm. oh. so go the to photoshoptv.com it's not the pattern maker filter so don't put that in your answer go to enter this contest enter once as always and of course we wish you the best of luck all right, now we're going to give you three things to do between now and next week's show, and then I'm going to wrap things up with, I'm doing the one for the road this week. So I'll be giving you a tip to shove off with. All right. All right, uh, my first to do is to check out the Luminous Landscape. Now, the website is lum Luminous, and then the dash, and landscape.com. So if you go to a page that looks nothing like a really cool photography site, then you forgot the dash. Luminouslandscape.com. A great site. Uh, you'll find Michael Reitman on there and, and a host of other cool people and all the forums and stuff. A lot of great information on photography, on Photoshop, on RAW, on Lightroom. It's one of the best sites out there. So if you haven't been there, which I, you probably have, but i just reminding you again, go check it out. It's better than ever. Well, I have a to-do, which is a little unusual, perhaps, because it's not really a Photoshop or photography. It's actually Guy Kawasaki's blog, and he just has a really cool blog where he finds all kinds of interesting stuff about advertising, marketing, branding, entrepreneurship. So if you are self-employed or just want to improve the kind of stuff you do on a day-to-day -day basis, it's well worth checking out. I'm not going to try to tell you the URL because it's too complicated, but here it is. Go try and take a look at it. Also, uh, go take a look at photoworkshop.com. Among being uh, just a great website, uh, in addition to being a great website, I should say, uh, they've also got the fifth annual digital imaging contest sponsored by Adobe. So uh, you can go there, you can enter, and check out the other stuff on the website as well. Photoworkshop.com. Very cool. All right, it's time for One for the Road. Okay, well, this week's tip, this little last tip to send you off with, is a camera raw tip. So, if you're using Camera Raw, of course, you can set the white balance by using the sliders or using one of the pop-up menus. But you can also use that little white balance tool, right? Well, here's the thing. Two little tips. It's a double tip in one. It's Ooh. two for the road. <laughs> two and two. Um, number one, when you click the white balance tool, don't click on something that is pure white. Okay? Click on something that is a very, very, very light gray. Ideally, 18% gray, but you don't have to use that. <laughs> no, just pick on a nice, a nice light gray with that. But here's the thing. So as you're moving the tool and you're sampling different areas, of course, white balance is actually a creative choice. I mean, there is the appropriate white balance, which is exactly right balanced for white, but it may make your photo look bad. For example, you're doing some, you know, a portrait or something, you set the white balance and it's, whoo, it's dead on the money and the people look bad. That's why they actually make white balance tools like warm card uh, white balance tools that actually specifically make the white balance correct, but a little bit warmer for skin tones, very popular with wedding photographers and portrait photographers. So... Choose the white balance you like, and if you decide, you know what, I just don't like this, I want to go back to where I started, if you double-click back on the white balance tool, it automatically resets you to the add shot setting. So there you go. Cool. Very nice. Two little, two two, little ones. Two and one. Two well, Dave, take us out this choppy. week, will you? Oh, choppy hands, pointy, <laughs> choppy, gesturing. I don't know if I can follow that, but I'll try. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks to our sponsors. Thanks to you for viewing. I'm Dave Cross. That's Scott Kelby. That's Matt Kloskowski. See ya. And we shall see you next time on another episode of Adobe Photoshop TV. See you then. See ya.